Hey guys, welcome back. So a while ago, I released this holster right here. It's the retention holster that interfaces off the Streamlight TLR VIR2. Instead of indexing off the pistol, it indexes off the light, so you can toss the light on nearly any pistol and use it in this holster. It's great for use with suppressors because all the top parts open, you can easily draw, and it is a, a retention holster, so you can't pull the pistol out anytime you want unless you press this button down right here. The button deactivates this little locking lever, which grabs onto the edge of the light. I've been using this guy for a little over a year now, and it's still doing pretty well, but after releasing this initial design, I had lots of people asking if the TLR uh, one HL would fit in this holster also, which it won't because it has a larger bezel. So lots of people are asking me for a redesign for that. So that's what we did. So I've got this TLR one HL on my G20 and I've redesigned the holster to be able to work with this light now too. Some differences between these two holsters is that in the HL model, We've got a little bit more trigger coverage right here. So here on the Glock 20, we've got great coverage for that trigger all the way around. We have uh, very little gaps to be able to access that trigger. We also have a different shape of locking piece. It interfaces off the back of the button versus the front of the button. Uh, this is because we had to move the locking piece a little bit further down in the light. So instead of indexing right up here, like it does on the VR2, on the HL model, it indexes further down, like right about there. It has to index further down because of this screw right here. See that on the VR2, this screw is flush, so the locking piece can slide over the top of it, but it can't slide over the top of it on the TLR1. So we had to scoot it down a little bit so it wouldn't hit that. Another important point is that this screw does have to be turned to where these two little protrusions are in line with the frame of the gun. They can't be turned sideways or anything like that. So you see these two little humps? Those guys are gonna be riding down inside of this channel right here inside the holster. So they have to be in line nearly this direction. But just like the other one, it still has a good solid lockup and good retention. I printed everything off in PETG. That's what I printed the original in and it's been holding up pretty well over the last year that I've had this. So I think I'm just gonna stick with it. Uh, first thing you're gonna need to do once you get the print generally cleaned up, I'll insert a pistol just to make sure everything's kind of fitting right. It lets me know that I had all my scaling correct. But that feels pretty good. So we can move on to the next step, which is taking a 16th inch drill bit. And we're gonna drill out all these holes that we're gonna put pins in. So I'm just slowly running the drill bit through all these holes just to kind of clear them out. All right, and we've got our unlocking tab. We've got this little raft right there. That's just to keep this point from curling up. You can just break that off. And we've got our locking piece right here. Gonna wanna drill that out also. There we go. Always take a little bit of a knife and make sure that we don't have anything sticking out the side right there, or else it might, uh make this bind up as it moves back and forth. Next I've got this spring right here. I'm gonna cut it in half, or just about in half. If I remember right from the last one, it's gonna be about 0.4 inches and 0.6 inches, but we'll trim them to the exact length we want as we assemble this thing and we like feel out how it fits. First things first, we can insert our locking tab. You've got this notch right here, and you've got a little hole right down inside there. And what we're gonna be doing is putting the shorter of these two springs, the one that's about uh, a little bit under half an inch long, down inside that little recess. 
and trying to make it stand up. This is one of the trickier parts of this build is just trying to get this spring to stand up down the side there. Using a little bit of your pin kind of helps sometimes. But once you get them to stand up, you're just going to set that spring right down inside that notch and set this guy down on top of them. We're going to pull this all the way down to the bottom inside the uh, notch that way. I'm going to push it down flat. And once we've done that, we can send our drill through once again just to make sure that the holes are going to line up, which they feel like they are. Then I'm going to take a piece of the 16th inch pin and tap it in. This pin stock, I think I got it from my knife maker supply place, but uh, I'll drop an Amazon link below for it too. It feels like we've got just a little bit of a hang up up here on top, but I have a feeling that that'll wear in. It doesn't seem like it's going to keep it from working, but if it does, we can always just uh, pull it out and sand down the top of that locking tab just a little bit. I'm going to tap it in to where the pin is nearly all the way through to that hole, and then I'm going to trim off the excess. leave it sticking out just a little bit for now just in case we need to uh, pull out and do some type of adjustment it makes it easier to grab next we're gonna take our button and if you look down inside this hole you're gonna see a deeper part and then like a little ledge what you're gonna do with the other part of this spring is tilt the holster like this back towards the front towards the ledge and then you can slide that little spring down inside there like that and it's gonna get caught on that ledge that spring is gonna sit between that ledge and this little ledge right here on the button, and that's what's going to make the button come up and return. So now you can see when we press down, it releases the unlocking tab, and then it returns the button to the top position. Now we're just going to take our little pin right here and slide it down inside that hole right there. We don't want to stick out this back side, so Let's just send it as far as we can without it protruding the other side. Then we can just cut off the excess. There we go, that looks pretty good. And it works. So now we have a good tight fit on the pistol and it locks in there real nice. So at this point we can take a punch and we can go ahead and drive this other pin the rest of the way back down inside since we know that uh, everything's working well together. There we go. That all feels really good. We've got a Safari Land hole pattern back here on the back, so you can add on your KLS fork, or you can put it straight to a Safari Land patterned uh, belt loop. Uh, for the threads on the inside, just take some of these 8-32 uh, machine nuts, and they will press fit into these holes recessed on the inside of the holster. All you gotta do is you just set the nut down in there, and then they press fit in. That's been easy enough. For your screws, you can just get some 8-32 screws from uh, Amazon, Granger, or straight from Safari Land if you want. Just gotta make sure that you get like the wide head ones. I didn't order the wide head ones, I got the narrower head ones by mistake and I had to use these washers. Still works, but not as nice and clean as the actual Safari Land screws. So make sure you pay attention to what you're buying. Anyways, there we go. You guys asked for it, and uh, that's what you got. I'm not going to tell you to trust your pistol to a 3D printed holster, but uh, I've been running around with my G20 in it for quite some time, and it's held it pretty well. I've been running ready four wheelers and that kind of stuff. I haven't done anything crazy hard with it, like like jumping on it or rolling around on the ground, but I can tell it holds it in there pretty darn well. Uh, another feature, I guess you could call it, I found out about, if you have the light on and you leave it on, when you insert it into the holster, 
it actually turns it off for you. I didn't even intentionally design that. It's just the way that the locking, the locking tab works. Whenever it engages, it pushes that paddle back down that direction. So if it's locked on, it automatically turns off in your reholster. So that's kind of a cool feature, even though it wasn't necessarily intentional. So there we go. Yeah, the files are already up for free on Thingiverse. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to help with the channel, be sure to like, subscribe. Comments really help. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. I just do this for fun in my free time. So if you want to give some money to something, find your local Habitat for Humanity, send some money their way, and then come back here, comment, tell me that you did that. I'd appreciate doing that instead of you, you giving me money to do what I'm already going to do for fun. So there you go, guys. Enjoy it. Let me know how you like it.